to three crores in funding to 10 startups by end of March, with about $100,000 being committed from Let's Venture and about $150,000 being committed from Dieback Low. Because if you give anybody, it's let's say you end up giving two crores. Mm. And in the two crores, if the founder cannot get to a stage where he reaches a certain specific point which helps him to raise more than the next round of money. Because he has raised the money, the next investor is going to be asking a lot more proof points. Because if you give any money, it's let's say you end up giving two crores. Mm. And in the two crores, if the founder cannot get to a stage where he reaches a certain specific point which helps him to raise more than the next round of money. As a person, he's always approachable yeah. and he always has time for everybody. That's what I really noticed. And any conversation is very relevant and quite deep in that sense. You know, so that's what it characterizes and you will probably hear a lot more. So I don't want to take away. The only place where success comes before work is the addiction heat. <laughs> so, uh, and that is hard work. Hard and hard work. Of course, it was without saying hard work, but very focused. Yeah. So we look forward to this in the future. Thank you. So let's start off with your journey as an entrepreneur. Yeah, maybe the pre-entrepreneurial days. Maybe two points, right? What was the journey up to being an entrepreneur? And when was the moment? Or was there such a moment at all where you woke up and said, oh, now I want to be an entrepreneur? What was that transition like? I just love to work with entrepreneurs. I just love to work with nonprofit organizations that solve some big problems for the society which has a, a bigger impact on the mankind. And in whatever capacity that I can do, and most of the projects that I get involved on the nonprofit world are the ones where I just don't write the check. I just like to get deeply involved. That's just my nature and that's what I do even with the companies as well. We made a small room for uh, ourselves to cook our food and all of that. So the first aspect of the negotiation essentially started back then because my job, because I was so young, he didn't want to trust my cooking. <laughs> he wanted to cook, but my job was to do two things. One is to get the milk early in the morning and the second one is used to give me uh, 25 paisa. This is, you're talking about 1967. But I just stuck to my point. I said, I want to learn something. Please introduce me to some company. So after like three, four iterations of, of him telling me to go back and then me telling him that I need this job, finally he yielded and then he picked up the phone and called one of his students who had a company called Bombay Electronics in a place called Mahim. So he called up and said, I've got this crazy student of mine. I'm trying to tell this guy to go to Bangalore, but this guy wants to work. Can you help him out? Can you listen to this guy? Almost instantly, this person said, please send him immediately. Mm. So if I reflect back today, that some student, right, who shows that level of motivation, in fact, that's the kind of people that you want to work with. There is nobody in our family who is a businessman. Mm -hmm. We are all like professors, teachers, and that's what our background is. We have no business kind of an experience, uh, unlike business families have. So are you sure this is what you want to do? I said, yes, this is what I want to do. I've planned out everything and I'm going to jump in and I started, right? So we started and we went through lots of ups and downs and <coughs> finally we somehow managed to make it. <laughs> so the thought process was that if I get the chief minister to inaugurate, yeah. he's not going to come to my office to see who we are. In fact, we just had you know a small office with one person. So we held our event in Oberai. Mm. And he had no idea that we only had one employee. By the way, don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't go back and tell SM Krishna. <laughs> so we called SM Krishna and then, you know, there was this entourage of press that was invited. And SM Krishna gave a fantastic speech. Of course, you know, we had written all the things about how we are a high technology company. And uh, at that time, every press would ask, how many thousand people you're going to hire? Right? Because it's a, it's all service-driven economy at that time. So our pitch was, 
we are not going to hire thousands of people, but let me tell you, we're going to bring experience of building a product A through Z. The company did not make the market payment for that loan that we took. Mm. And I guess we missed the payment by maybe three months or so. Mm. And the company didn't make the payment and, I, and we got a letter from the leasing company that Mr. Jagadish, your company has not made the payment and if we don't receive the payment in the next whatever 30 days or 45 days we have a lien on your house and we'll have to come and take your house i tell you that was the shocking moment of life absolutely that was a shocking moment of life so i took this letter and i went to my cfo i said hey dick what's happening here <laughs> so he, he read the same letter so he, i went to him after the board meeting and i said john this is something that is bothering me I said, what's bothering you you know i'm trying very very hard to get especially for this r d group mm. almost 95 percent of engineers are all like indians and uh, you know i'm trying to get the non-indians into this group and somehow it's not happening at all and every time we advertise, only Indians apply. <laughs> and we need the people. And we end up hiring more and more Indians. And the more Indians you have, it's even harder to find non-Indians. So the point he was trying to make was, please ensure we get more of these kind of people. Mm. So especially for the Indian countrymen, we've got to ease the policies to get more of the uh, Indian citizens, Indian people, to come to the United States. I thought that was really, really, really very positive. Yeah. Very positive because Indian GDP today is almost two X of the juice, which is the highest per capita income. And Indians are like 127 or 128 K per year per capita income versus the juice, which is somewhere around 65, 70.